Yolo, Composing Gloves here, and today we're gonna to be doing some basic recording inside of FL with Edison. Just show you the ropes of Edison. We're not gonna get into the details of Edison. I have a whole series on that. Just the very, the very basic, so you can get up and running and do what you wanna do. So in order to do this, let's just do a quick example. That's the fastest way to learn. So go ahead, open up a synthesizer and write out a simple line. And so that's what I wanna record that. It's my, uh, something I wanna record. So to do this, I'm just gonna make sure I know where it's going. So I'm like, okay, I am sending it to mixer track 27. So I go to mixer track 27. I wanna load Edison up here. You can load it all the regular ways. I'm assuming you know how to load plugins. So I'm gonna show you the fancy way. If you hit control E, it loads up an Edison for you. Here we go, we're ready to go. So in order to record it, we have our typical record button. So this just is saying, okay, right now we're recording. If this isn't on, if this was basically playback mode. So if we had a sound in here, we could have our sound going. So we're gonna record enable. And right now this is the mode of record we're in, I guess is how you could say that. So it's on on input. So as soon as I send a note, it's gonna start recording and then it'll stop after 30 minutes or until I tell it to stop. So you see I sent some notes, it's recording. This typically isn't what you want to have happen but it could be something, I've used it in a couple situations. So that could be useful. And you can like change how long you want it to go for, or like I just did, you could just hit the stop recording. They also have a now option. So as soon as I record enable, it starts recording. Bam, there it is, look at it go. It's recording nothing. And then the, the one we're gonna use the most is on play. So on play, what it does is when I record enable, as soon as I hit this play button, it will start recording. And as soon as I stop this play button, it's going to stop recording. So if I hit play. And as an added bonus, whenever we jump in our song, it makes a, it makes a marker for us. Now, if I want to click down here, you notice I'm not, it's not doing anything. Uh, it's because I'm still record enabled. So I simply stop recording. And now I'm free to click down here and make selections. So if you double click, it resets your selection. If you click drag, that extends your selection. And if you control click on a marker, it will select everything between two markers. Now I want this in my playlist, right? And I don't want this extra bit here because that's like, you know, extra garbage. I didn't finish recording it. I only want this bit because it's a perfect loop. So I say, okay, in order to do that, I can simply save it using the save function in here or I can use this file drop icon and drop it on. And now you've got some audio. So that's basic recording with Edison, super easy peasy. There's a couple things you should uh, probably know. Uh, one that's important is if you have Edison in one of your slots, let's say that I've got a really crazy distortion. We'll go to some crazy mode and let's turn down citrus so it's not ear piercing. <laughs> So okay, that's what we have, right? And we're, we're experimenting. We wanna know what it sounds like at different stages in our signal chain. So we say, all right, if I record Edison, and Edison right now, as you can see, is after driver, it's going to record all the effects driver has on it. So if I put it before driver, we are going to record just the sine waves not being affected. So let's go ahead, let me show you. I'm gonna record enable it and hit play. And now, <laughs> that sounds pretty crazy. If I play back what's in Edison, hold the phone. I gotta turn off driver, because what's in Edison, this is a, another important note, I guess. So it is the pure sine waves, but because Edison plays back, it feeds it right into driver. So we have to turn driver off first. But now if we play it, we see, that's what we were feeding driver but in reality now we can say oh well what would it sound like with only you know the effects above edison if we put edison after driver and record it let's uh let's look at that so we record enable and hit play and you see we have recorded the monstrous sound that driver's outputting so if i go ahead and play the inside of what's inside of edison 
that's what's going on. So this could be really cool because now we have the ability to hear only certain effects. So if I only want to hear, if I want to hear it with distortion or without distortion, I can do that. And so if I'm experimenting with the effects down here, maybe I'll put Edison right here just so I have room to experiment, you know. And this is why the slave feature is really useful. So if I do that and I want to play back the audio that's in Edison, because, you know, if I play, if I, if I take the audio file out and let it go through the mixer track again, it's going to go through all the effects. So some of the effects will double up. There'll be two of them. You don't always want that. So that means that we need a way to play back Edison with our with our, our track. So what you can do is you can turn on slave mode. What slave mode does is that as I move my cursor around, let me show you here. Here, you notice that a red bar appears inside of Edison that matches this bar here. And so now if I hit playback here, it will also trigger the playback inside of Edison. And so that's really, really cool. Now, sometimes this can be a bad thing because it's making sounds that aren't in the sequence, this, the playlist. And you might not be aware of it or you might be going, where's that sound coming from? And so in those cases, just check to see if your slave icon is on. If it is, that's what's happening. But it's really useful because now we're able to quickly hear what various combinations of effects would sound like. And this can sometimes be a lot more CPU friendly. So that's one thing you could use Edison for. A caution about recording long things, like you see this forever option. I would not record long things inside of Edison. It's built to work with RAM more. There's a lot more uh, editing features available. It's built to work with like smaller things. If you're gonna record long stuff, use the playlist recording abilities, just uh, so you know. And inside of Edison, there's a couple of cool features that uh, I think are worth mentioning. If we grab a sample, you can load samples in here. There we go. So there's a sample and we loaded it up and we see that we have a loop. We are, we're not gonna worry about loops, but something you can do inside Edison that you can't do inside the playlist is you can zoom in to the sample level which is, as we keep zooming here, which is really handy. Like, look at that, that's beautiful. Another thing you can do is if you click on this eyeball, you can see the spectrum view. So this is what the spectrum of my sound looks like. Kind of looks like a vast field from this view. Pretty cool. So, and if you want that off, you simply turn off spectrum. So we can open up things and this is really cool. So if I want to sample, you know, just this bit. And you notice my space bar is linked up to Edison. So when I hit the space bar, it doesn't trigger this play button. It triggers the play button in Edison alone. Even if I have my sync function, my sync function on. You notice that it doesn't trigger it up here. So uh, that I should have said slave, slave function. But if I want to take this bit, maybe I'm sampling it. I'll say, okay, there it is. And bam, I have only that little bit. So that could be really handy. Easy way to load files. You can load all kinds of files and uh, do stuff like that. I want to mention the append button as well. So what append does, append just means to add on. So if I'm recording, so let's go back to our pattern and record what's going on. Oh yeah, and you see here, this is a common thing I'm constantly doing. If I hit spacebar, it stops. I have to click on this because Edison is expecting me to be using this playback when I have it in what's called my keyboard focus. So my keyboard currently is focused on this. I can see this because of how it's like, this panel is moved back. Like you see the shading right here. If I click on FL, it like comes forward. So it lets me know. And FL Studio lets me know that it's in focus because buttons like these buttons up here, these three, those are dark gray. But when I click on it, they become light gray. So I know, oh, my keyboard focus has left FL Studio and it is now focused on Edison. So if I want to initiate recording, I, I need to click up here. And so, uh, yeah, so that's what we have. And on append, if I continue to record with it record enabled, 
it will continue to add on to my recording. It's gonna append the recording. So you see, there it is. But if I disable append, it will start an entirely new recording. Now there's a slight bug with this feature, feature, with this feature, check it out. If I hit play, it still appends. And that's because I left record enable on the entire time. So it remembers those settings. So we need to turn it off and re-record enable. And now it will start an entirely new recording. And that is how that works. To undo, you do undo like you normally would control Z. But if you do another control Z, that's redo. So if you want to do continuous undos, you'd hit control Z, control alt Z. And that will allow you to do multiple undos. If you want to see your undo history, you can right click on undo and you can see all the things you can undo. The undo list is separate from FL Studio's list. And that's kind of important to know. Uh, so if you want to undo stuff in here, you need to use its undo list. If you don't go looking in FL Studio's undo list, it's not going to be in there. And those are the big features. There's one other thing that's kind of cool that we should, uh, that I think is worth mentioning as well. If I record enable and let's just uh, record something. Whoops, there's that space bar thing again. You can see that's a habit I have. So there we have our sound. And we have a suite of editing features that we come in here. Like I can normalize it and do fades and stuff like that. I'll let you come in there and mess with that stuff. But what I think is just the handiest is the scrub tool. So if you click on this tool, this little button and drag back and forth, that you can record um, basically scratch effect. Let me load up another Edison. So now I've got two Edisons. I'm gonna put this Edison after the first. So I'm gonna rename this Edison, Edison one, so we know which one's what. So I'm gonna look at Edison two, and I'm gonna have it record on input. And then I'm gonna record my scratching. So you can get some really uh, creative effects by putting two Edisons in a row and using the scrub ability. And that's uh, something that I think is totally cool. So just as a general overview, you just load it up. Control E loads it up like so. If you hit Shift E, it loads it up with the slave function already on, the record enable, append is off. I believe that just is whatever setting you had your last one on though. And then on play, I usually like loading it like this and then I'll turn slave off because I don't want it doing random stuff. Edison is great for being used to audition effects and experiment with signal chains. And then, oh, there's one other thing that's worth uh, saying too that I think is pretty cool. If we record on play, and we have a loop. What I like to do is I have like some drums going and I'll slap Edison on the mic channel. And then the saxophone player, right, will be playing their saxophone and riffing. And I'll record it on on play. This way, I can see their phrases in sort of meaningful units. So if I have them recording over a four bar loop, I'm able to see their four bar loop and so I can see the recordings in sort of chunks of phrases. And the reason I want this is because if I drag it on there, and let's say I have like a super long audio file, and just really long, tons of phrases recorded. And I can take the scrub tool by clicking on this scrub tool icon here, and I can chop it up by holding shift, click drag. And I'm able to sort of go through an audition different parts of their solos really fast. So let's say, okay, I wanna check out this, this, maybe this is the first phrase, and then I can come in here and experiment with the next phrase. And then if I wanna know where the next phrase starts, well, there's gonna be a marker for that. So I say, oh, there is the marker for the next phrase, and I'm able to very efficiently navigate the solo. And so the, the loop recording inside Edison is awesome. Uh, also, the loop recording inside of FL, sometimes you run, in, you run into bits and pieces missing off the ends. That issue doesn't exist with Edison, so I really like it. So that, in a nutshell, is recording with Edison. If there's like a feature you really thought should have been explained that's really useful, let me know. Uh, these are like the main features. Obviously, there's, there's many more. 
because there's a ton of buttons on here we just didn't talk about. That's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Thank you.